Hey, it's Mel from Rap Rankings. To hear the full episode this clip comes from and all of the other episodes, check the link in the description, stop by raprankings.com, or search Rap Rankings on your favorite podcast platform. And please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting to help us grow the channel and continue our journey as hip-hop's first and premier extreme podcast. Okay, folks, welcome back. And we have a nah, very I got special this, I got guest. this, I got this. Nah, 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 here we go. Yo, F-U-G-M. Okay, I'm censoring myself because my daddy listening, potentially. <laughs> F you, bro. I don't like you, bro. Okay? We got beef, you and I. Me and you. You, 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 you. I've heard things about you, GM. You're exactly the kind of man I hate. You know that? There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's people like you that keeps me and, and young children from enjoying the great sport. Uh, rather, not the sport. The great, the great tradition. The great pastime. Of, of basketball car collecting. What do you have to say for yourself, Jim? I heard you're encroaching on my territory. Are you, you're like those guys that are lurking around in, in, front of, in front of Target, looking unsavory, waiting on trucks to show up so they, can, so they can buy things and take them from kids and sell them on the internet. Is that true? Is that what you're doing out here, Jim? Is this, is this, is this, are we going to have a problem? Because well, Mel, listen, hold on a second. You first of all, you interrupted me, Mel. Second of all, oh, my bad, what's, my bad. what's this that I'm hearing about you telling GM to do Pokemon cards instead? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, all right, I did that. So <laughs> let me let me be clear, okay? Listen, whatever you heard about that is hundred percent true. So they say, Mel, you're probably a hypocrite then. You talk about kids, there are probably more kids who want to buy Pokemon cards and basketball cards. I said, listen, no, Pokemon is an adult pastime. It's an adult, that's an adult thing to do, you know, because you have to be a certain age to run around the globe capturing little monsters and stuff. That's not kids work. You can, you can pick up a basketball at five years old, you know. So, so that Pokemon, I'm just, I'm just looking out for GM. I'm trying to get him into some more age appropriate uh, subjects. I don't think that's what's going on. I think that you're trying to lead him off the trail of what's really hot right now. Nah, I would never do that. GM is my friend. Well, GM, before, we go, before, we he, way back. before he falls asleep in Jesse's creaky chair, some love him, some hate him, but due to the reaction he received due to his last appearance, we have to bring him back. Folks, ladies, gentlemen, dogs, cats, alligators, <laughs> as many fresh would say. Um, I'd like to introduce you to a very controversial man, but a man that we love having around the RAV headquarters nonetheless. Folks, Mr. Not You Raps, GM. All right, so I've... I've been here looking at the counter for uh, two minutes and 59, (laughs) three minutes, three minutes now I've been here. I was introduced. And before I could say anything at all, this guy over here jumps on. I don't even get to I don't get to say what up to anybody. I don't get to say I don't get to ask Lyle how he's doing. I don't get to say how's how's the how how are things around the uh, the headquarters. I don't get to say Melvin, how are you doing? How's everything around uh, around your place? I I just get th- I don't even I nothing nothing I didn't even get nothing. See, so, this is what I think needs to happen. What's that? There's up? obviously some animosity between Mel or Mel's, as GM would say, Mel's. <laughs> And GM, due yep. to GM's last appearance, where yep. many say that he roughed up Mel a bit too much. It turned into a shoot, many thought. Look so at, we need to, I think what happened here if is you that, want a sh- If you want the real shoot, I'll give you the real shoot. Now, I think what happened here is that when GM came to the arena, which he was yep. scheduled for, by the way, he uh-huh. was invited to come here. Mm-hmm. I think Mel's... AKA Mel was waiting at the entrance at the loading bay to attack mm. GM upon his entrance into the arena because he was holding back. He was holding feelings, animosity, whatever you want to call it from his last appearance. Yeah. So, um. I mean, listen, GM is a guy who by all accounts, many listeners in the rab universe feel like, 
this man was very aggressive. He was perhaps a bit too, quote, extra. Mm -hmm. You know, some people weren't mm -hmm. feeling your, quote, energy. But, yeah. you know, in, in the wrestling business, we call that a heel, you know, a bad yeah. guy. Someone who the, yeah, someone who the fans boo. Well, but um, what becomes mm -hmm. of the baby face who uses heelish tactics to get revenge? <laughs> this is this is what I'm saying. I'm saying I, I again, like you said, I was invited onto the show. I stepped in. I didn't even Mel didn't even, Mel <clears throat> Mel's didn't even uh, he didn't even <laughs> give me a chance to like he didn't even set the track. He's a terrible face, to be honest with you. He's a terrible heel um, is what oh. I mean. Uh, uh, he's a terrible heel because of the fact that he didn't even set the trap. He just he just jumped in like there was no <laughs> there was no trap setting. So I'm not really I'm not I'm not upset about it. Look, um, it, no disrespect to your uh, to your fans. Um, everybody that listens to this show. Uh, well, I hear I, mean, I hear your energy is down from about the nine it was at on the on the dynasty appearance. Yeah, you sound like you're no. operating at about a six right now. No, no, no. My my energy changes based on the situation that I'm in. I'm, I'm, I'm a little I think down that's today. what happens. No, I'm no, a little no, depressed not to, today. No, 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 no. Nobody's depressed. I'm living. No, life is good. Life is good. I got this four-hour uh, Zack Snyder cut to get into. Uh, um, I, at some was, point. I got life this four-hour energy. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no wow, one was hour. Listen, listen. Yeah. Some people drink like the four-hour. <laughs> listen, some people drink that. They drink four-hour energy. Look, I got a heart condition. I can't. I can't do the five-hour. Because you have a heart condition. I can't do the five-hour. That's right. The four-hour energy. But then if you watch Zack Snyder's cut of Justice League, we call that four hour lethargy. Look at what I'm what I'm saying. What I'm saying. What I'm saying is um, I have, uh, you know, not to drudge up the past, but I've done podcasts oh, before. Like I said before, um, when I was on the show last time, I've, I've done this before. Um, I've done, uh, you know, the day to day grind, if you will, of doing shows and stuff like that. Um, you can't have the same energy every day. It just doesn't work. Like wow. it just, so, that's, so that's not like you say keep the same energy. Are you saying that that's just not possible for you? No, it's possible. If look at if I was on the show last time and me and Melvin had a real, real problem, and and I was like, and we got off on some just to fuck you done, and we were we were done. I'd be like, that would be keep the same energy because well, then when true. I came on, that's I'd true. be like, yeah. all right, let's get into this, bro. Like, let's do this because you know I'm not, what it is? I'm not doing that. You know what yeah. it is? I think ultimately, and I mm -hmm. mean, it's not a bad thing. Yeah. I think the listeners care more than Mel does ultimately about. I think, no, I think so too. That's what I was going to say about your great listeners. I was going to say that I'm glad that they listen to the show and I'm, and this is not, when I say this, this isn't direct to each and every one. It's more as a collective, if you will. I don't give a fuck. Like <laughs> look, what I'm, what I'm saying. And here's what, here's why I'm saying that, right. Is because you can't make everybody happy. You can't, not everybody's going to love me in life. That's, uh, that's, you I'm old enough that. to know that. That's part or of being I'm, an adult. That's a big part I'm fine of with that. Adult. Now, look, um, here's real quick before we get into to me and my bitch. Um, I'm gonna pull the <laughs> I'm gonna pull the curtain. I'm gonna pull the curtain back just a little bit for the listeners of your show. Okay, the the people that are really really invested or really they really care about this. Okay, okay. Melvin and I have known each other now for almost five years. We've known each other. It's crazy to this think about true. that. This is true. Um, the first time that I, I interacted with Melvin really was when he was on the Pencil Net Geeks, which is uh, the the podcast that we had at the Blind Box Network, where we did a wrestling podcast, and that was that. That's where me and Melvin really, I feel like, got a chance to kind of to kind of kick back and forth and and develop a, a friendship. I feel like we're, you know we're not best friends; we don't hang out all the time. But I, but, but for the listeners, Melvin and I are cool. Like we have, there's no animosity there. Um, yeah. we yeah. develop this rapport through, I, I look at Melvin now, I, again, we're not best friends I, and we're not family, but I look at him as a little brother almost. Like I look at, like, oh. I don't what so when, wow. so Melvin, when you act out or when you say <laughs> dumb shit, I don't, <laughs> I don't take it personal and I don't expect other people's to take my reaction to that personal. I'm just reacting 
as as me. And I, I feel like I can do that with Melvin because, I, again, I look at him in, as like a little brother. Now, that doesn't mean that if um, – Now, do you look at him more as like a Fonte or a Big Poo? I would say more uh, of a Fonte. Okay. But no, mo- some – Yes. Um, what I'm saying is, is that if Melvin now, this doesn't mean that Melvin's going to move out to my house and like live here for a year and a half. Like he's not my like he's not my brother like that. But I'm saying if oh, Melvin I ever see. needs I a place. I see. But look I at see. no, no, no. Hold on. Look at look at. But if, if Melvin ever needs a place to stay when he's in town, holler at me. I'm here. Like we're like we're cool. Like we have no issue. So when I come on and I tell him that his opinion is bullshit. For 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 liking one of Jay Z's worst songs ever made, and he puts it in his top five songs ever no, made. It's his by favorite. Jay-Z. It's his favorite Jay Z song, as it turns out. Don't please That's don't not fucking true. get it. It's his this. highest rated Jay Z song. No, it's not. Which one's higher what's, rated? What's your higher? What's your highest? We're rated talking Jay-Z about Jigga Kelly, right? Yeah, yeah, you gave it a nine, J- I believe. Jigga Kelly is not my highest rated. What's movie? your highest so rated? So what movie? other J songs did you give a nine to? Because yeah. I'm going with, I'm You're believing cool Lyle on this, okay. to be I'm honest. Up, with I'm, Lyle, I'm going back. Lyle's the, the archivist. Right, I gave You Must Love Me a nine. Okay. Um, What else here? Did you give it a 9.4? A nine, no, it's just, just nine well, minus. Nine. Okay. I gave Streets Oh, not talking. Wait, hold on. Nine minus. Okay, well, you're leaving shit out already. You're right. Get, okay. That's why I, I that's why I asked. See, again, hold on. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to dead uh, the conversation just real fast before we get moving any further. I just want to point to be, point things something out to somebody that's listening right now. Anybody that can catch up on this or whatever that didn't when I just said 9.4 Somebody could hear that and be like, yo, he's being an asshole again. Like he's doing the thing from the last show. No, with you're the, not doing the, the thing. Doing the hold thing on, yet. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm just saying wh- I'm not doing the thing. What I'm saying is, is I want to know if there's a contingency. I want to know if the, if if there's something that, that he might be leaving out leaving because out. I know that, that sometimes people do that. He left and he left I, out the I, minus. I, so I never I, leave out. The, I was waiting to get too uh, <laughs> guilty until proven innocent. So yeah. that to start so doing you, the real you must love me a nine minus nine minus. Right. I gave streets is talking a nine minus. I gave right. guilty until proven innocent a nine minus. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they're all on the same level. Therefore, you can't out say of, out of those three, which one's the best one? If I had to pick. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, street streets is talking. Okay, out of those three, which is the worst one? Even though they're all nine minuses. Uh, uh, you must love me. <laughs> I can't believe you got it rated as his what? second all-time best song. Second all-time best song is Jigga Kelly, Not Guilty. I, I, that, that, that's that's crazy to you me. Know so like, says, gee, you know what that says to me? It's his number that? one, but he doesn't want to say it because he wouldn't I know, put it in I know. I, false. I, false, I, yo, false. Because if we continue, I give Threat off the Black Album a flat nine. So, okay, so that's your favorite, Jay-Z. So it's the third best song. Yes. Or the I second. Fucking, I don't think there are any more nines. Second. So so the listeners have to understand that when I I owned – Reasonable doubt in in ninety six ninety seven like I've I've gone and seen Jay Z in person like I've I've been there for the career path of Jay Z I've I, I I like I can't say any more without sounding like oh he's just a New York dude like oh he's from New York we get it blah 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 but I'm trying to explain to you I saw Jay Z open up for Diddy with a bulletproof vest on and behind him, it just said Jay Z. That's it. Like a backdrop that just said Jay Z. Like there's certain things about Jay that I take personal as a fan. Like that's just, I feel like everybody has artists that they're like that with. I take Jay personal in some ways. Like it's just the way it is as a, as a fan. I I'm like, you can't, you can't possibly listen to this man's catalog and say that his third best song is Jiggy Kell and Not Guilty. It just it's impossible to me. So it's if, it's, if it's a great song. It's classic. Shoulda went triple. Great you've song. been you've been waiting. All right. So what I'm saying is is that if somebody else said that, like one of the listeners, and we were hanging out in a room or whatever, and they were like, Jiggy Kelly not be is the best, you know, the third best Jay Z song. I would just I would just shrug my shoulders most of the time and just be like, all right, whatever. Like I'm not getting into it because I'm I'm too fucking old for this so shit. You're like, almost I don't saying care. Because, like, I don't because fucking care. Because you respect Mel, you want to exact, you yo, exactly. Go bar for like, bar with him over it. Yeah, I don't know if people realize that, but like when people say like I'm from New York, blah blah blah, et cetera, insert whatever. 
that means something to people from New York. Like people from outside of New York may not understand exactly what that means all the time, but that does mean something to people from New York. So when I say I'm from New York, if I fuck with you, I'm I'm going to go back and forth with you. I'm going to like I'm I'm not just going to let everything be cool all the time if I don't feel like it's cool because that's not that's not how we are. Like that's just that might be how they are in other places. And, and I've been to other places and I, I know that that's how they are in other places. That's not how I am. Like no matter where I live, I'm never going to be like that. So the reason why I, I, I can call Mel out like that is because I fuck with him because I, I because we've been cool this long. I don't, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to just censor myself or be quiet or whatever. Just right, because you're saying you know, I'm not asking that anybody said it, you're not about to jump in their mentions and spend all. Yeah. I'm definitely with them over it. No, I'm definitely not that guy. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, like whatever you like, don't like whatever you don't like. Like, it, I mean, I like weird shit and I like cool shit and I like, it, I like whack shit and whatever. I don't what? care. You call me out on my whack shit. No, I think everybody does though. I think that's the thing is like, everybody has to accept the shit that, that makes them different. That's the whole thing. Wow. With, when I say, when I say I am NY, it means I am not you. And what I'm saying is it doesn't mean I am not you in the, in the fact that ha ha ha, I'm not you. I'm so different, but it means, yo, we are all, we are all different. And just, and, 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 and that doesn't mean on a political thing. It doesn't mean on a, it just means on a, on a human level, we all like weird ass shit. Well, like if I'm, you notice, I gotta say, I'm loving the GM face turn. I didn't think I would, GM I would buy for in. president, man. What I, I'm I saying is, just real quick, what I'm saying is, if you notice, in the last like for for however long, like when I was growing up listening to rap music, you had to you had to like certain shit kind of. It was like a cookie cutter mold of what was cool to listen to rap music, and then eventually that shit started to change. Different rappers came in, and and different things started to you know um, kind of develop or whatever. Now, if you look at like rappers like Currency, this dude is taking mini pictures of of Hot Wheels cars on his Instagram, and he does that shit just as much as he releases music or he puts things out for people or whatever. And if he had done that 10 years ago, 15 years ago, people would have been like, Oh, currency Well, 20 years ago, currency, the dude that's on cash money takes pictures of hot wheels. That's fucking whack. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Nobody would have fucking gave him credit, bro. Nobody yeah. would. have. But now, yeah. but now it's like, yo, it's cool. Like, like just be you just do what you do. Don't worry about what, what anybody else is doing. So what I'm saying is Mel, Mel's can have that opinion. He can, he can have that opinion. I'm not telling him to change his opinion, but I'm definitely not going to let it fucking slide when, when, when I'm cool I with agree. him like that, like we're going to, we're going to mesh it out and we're going to figure it out. And if he really feels that way, let me know why. And I if mean, not, and this then is why I keep giving him about? a hard time. He gave Illmatic a five out of 10. Now, ultimately, do I really care that Mel gave Illmatic a 5 out of 10? No, it right. doesn't affect my enjoyment of Illmatic, which I believe is a 9 out of 10. Okay. It doesn't mean Illmatic is now a 5, and I have to accept that. So I will give him shit over his opinion mm -hmm. because, you know, for a lot of the same shit you outlined, honestly, I think you said some good stuff there. So, uh Wow, the GM face. Well, I appreciate and it. And the Mel, it a, just, a, a double turn, a WrestleMania 13, Austin and Bret Hart, you know, double turn. Now we got Well, and the, beautiful th and the beautiful thing is if you are a listener to this show and you like what you just heard and you didn't like what you heard before, that's the beauty of, of listening to to me is that you, I, it, that's just what it is. Like, I'm not a heel. I'm not a face. I'm a fucking human, man. Like we are all oh, fucking shit, humans. Oh, like shit. it's just Ray, what it is. A real like so, tweener, CM Punk, Austin yeah, yeah, yeah. ass promo. He'll stop that's a right. mud hole in your ass, but man, he's going to crack a beer afterwards, you know? Let's fucking get it. So that's so that's all I'm saying is um is it's good to be back. Uh, I appreciate the uh, the platform as always, just like I did last time. And um, to the listeners that fuck with me, cool. And to the listeners that don't, maybe one day you will. And if you don't, cool. Like it's all right. We'll all live. We'll all get by. You know. All right, right now, don't 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 drift into Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre. <laughs> Drew McIntyre. <laughs> yeah. All right. We, we, yeah. Yeah. You're, no, you're I understand. Good now. We like you. Okay, but, cool. You know, All right. I, I just right. I want to say I've been saving this. It's a brand new drop. I I, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to use. I was it today. hoping you it had depended. some ready. I was hoping you had some ready. I for got me. something Go for you. I I, I didn't go. know if I'd be able to use it because I didn't know what kind of energy you were coming with. But I got to say yep. the the GM face turn, the GM clarification. The whole world wants to know. Yeah, they, this is what they want to know. Yeah, will Mills allow it? I'll allow it. 
Mel's will allow it. He will allow it. Mel's is okay with this. All right. There you go. We're, uh, I mean, we're, sh- you know, we're shaking hands. We're, right. we're good. Like everybody's good. Like everybody. Now, and if you get that worked up over this shit, you just got to step outside, before, bro. Like just go outside and take song, a breath. Mel's, yeah. if you don't mind. Yeah. Uh, would you please read my nines from the Jay-Z season? Oh, sure. Okay. Let's see. I mean, pull up Mules' nines here. Um, do you have more than me? Maybe. Oh, oh, oh yeah, definitely. Oh, I believe that. Okay. Hell yeah. <laughs> I believe that. And 316 was two days ago. Uh, okay. All right. Here we go. Uh, can't knock the hustle. Yep. Um, nine. The evils. Nine. Yep. Can I live? Nine. Yeah. Coming of age. Nine minus. Uh, mm. You gave regrets a nine. Uh, the intro to volume one, you gave that a nine. Uh, imaginary player, nine. Uh, what else here? Is that, is that everything? I would have gave the intro to volume one higher. Uh, a 10, perhaps? I would have gave it a nine plus or whatever the hell you guys oh, do. It's the same um, rating. It was doctored <laughs> in the same way. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, that's, yeah. Redacted what? Redacted who? Origina- oh, I can say that. <laughs> nigga what? Nigga who? Originator 99. You <laughs> I can say that. <laughs> you, uh, you don't have to redact yourself. Yeah, I, you know, um, I'll be forgetting something. You know? uh, I, I, think, I think redacted what? Redacted who is, um, is better than Notorious Thugs. Sure. Okay. I'll accept that opinion. Maybe I even yep. agree with it. Wow. Yep. Okay. That's my that's my my hot take so far. Uh, Mules, you got a lot more here. So ghetto, volume three. You give that. A nine. Oh, that's definitely a nine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So ghetto is underrated as well. Now, G, wow. you got to keep in mind. I don't give any Jay Z songs a ten. I hardly give any songs a ten. It's hard. Yeah. yeah so yeah. nines are basically tens if you want to look at it that way. These are my highest <laughs> rated Jay Z songs. Uh, well, Dynasty intro nine minus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this can't be life. We know about that. Mm-hmm. Nine oh, plus. Oh God. Nine don't get plus. me started. Wow, probably yeah, my favorite Jay. Yeah, nine plus for that. Uh, let's see. Uh, any more? Any nines on the blueprint? Uh, no, no nines on the blueprint. Um, Heart of the City, uh, the unplugged version. You, you give oh, nine. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can't knock the hustle, unplug nine plus. Do y'all do y'all like? I guess this kind of goes into what we're talking about, right? Like what we're about to talk about is um, do y'all like live tracks normally? It depends. Uh, depends. We'll talk about it. it, it okay. All right. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm uh, getting ahead of myself. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, you're good. Uh Hovey baby, nine. Um That's a little bit that's a little a little debatable, I think. I like it a lot. I love it. I'm not I'm personal, but I mean I'm just saying I would put it more in like a s like a seven and a half to an eight, but it's I don't know, there's something about it that's just off to me. I think it's his last big bar out. That's why I I hold it in the esteem that I do. Wow. A yeah. big bar out. Okay. Uh, it's gonna be a new. I, I would actually. I would swap that out with like Jack and Jay Z. Fuck no. Because wow. I like that song, but no. a lot of people don't like that song. I remember that coming out. I, I was. I mean, listen. I was listen, at, I don't, I don't say fuck no. School, like, I, school like, it might be like a seven to me, but that. we probably feel yeah. differently about those two songs. What else we got? Yeah, that's fine. Um, is that the final nine in Jay Z's career according to Mools? No, Punjabi. Oh, oh, the mixtapes, right? Okay. Well, well yeah. As far as the albums go, yeah. So there's nothing else in the albums. Yeah. Yeah. See, but I don't know mixtapes. It's just it doesn't hit the same for me after that blueprint too. Yeah, you gave it a nine plus. Would you put the pump it up freestyle up there? What is that? What did I give that? No. Um. Because his wordplay on that is flatty. His wordplay on that is crazy. Pretty good. Flat eight I gave it an eight minus. His wordplay on that is nuts. Uh, it's, yeah, it's dope. The wear, Speaking the... of which, uh, it, I'm shocked that you just brought this up, but Sean Bradley just got paralyzed. So I bet Jay feels like a real fucking asshole now. Yeah, oh, I saw no. that. That's that's terrible. Like, how do you not see somebody who's seven foot six riding a bike? Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> like, I what an asshole! I gotta. Say, I know that like, wasn't supposed to be funny, but that's a great point. Like, I, 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 I almost. Like, what the fuck? I, like. I'm glad that we did that review when we did because I don't know if I if that line. Was, <laughs> he said, "You're not an athlete, you Sean Bradley." I you can oh, now man. say the line oh. hits harder than ever. Honestly, uh, oh. he wasn't really like an athletic big man, though. You know what I mean? I didn't think he was. I mean, I guess you could debate it, but I didn't think so. Now it sounds like when Eminem disses Christopher Reeves. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, didn't but he dissed him. He dissed Christopher Reeves when Christopher Reeves was already fucked up. Yeah, but I'm saying like now. Oh, that's what you're okay, listening what you're back saying. to. It is going to sound like that to me. It's like Biggie with the World Trades. Exactly. Yeah, he wasn't even talking about. So yeah. uh, speaking of Biggie, we can transition to what track is yeah. this? Mel thirty eight. I'm 92? good, man. I'm good at this. I do this. <laughs> I fucking do this. Fifty five. What song number is this? Uh, this is actually uh number twenty five. Yeah, track twenty five. Uh, yeah, me and my bitch live from Philly. Um, of course the notorious B.I.G. Oh, and what? Puff Daddy. Uh, kick it one time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh. Listen, we, 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 the rating system, we, we usually only do it under the guest first appearance. GM, he knows about the rating system. You know, mm-hmm. if the listeners don't know, it's raprankings.com, if FAQs. If you don't know, now you know. Yeah, right. You know, if you don't yeah. know, well, not now. You, you, you go and find it, and then you'll know. You know, if you don't know, you'll find it, and then you'll know, nigga. Uh, redacted. So, yeah, redacted. Um, who, who wants to go first with this rating? I, I, I mean, I always like to ask the guests if they would like to go first or if they would like us to go first. Um, y'all can go first for this one. I went first last time, I think. Okay. I think I went first last time. Okay. Um, Mel, do you have a preference? Should I go? Do you want me to, do you want to go? What do you, what do you want to do? Uh, uh, you go first. Bullshit. I'm going first. Seven plus for me. All right. Uh, flat seven for me. Eight. <laughs> okay. Well, we all like it. That's good. That's Eight. good. To know. I love when a guest comes in. Let me just say, I love when a guest comes in with like a normal rating. What's my, what do you mean? What's a non-normal well, rating? Usually Anything like below eight. 10. <laughs> <laughs> I understand Wait, no, no, guests coming on nine. for anything songs that they nine. feel are 10s because it's like, yeah, they want to come on for the song that like they just love to death. Like, I yeah, get it. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes yeah. it's like, you know, it's like somebody comes on, it's like, oh, it's a seven. Or, you I'm, know, I'm, like, a, oh. I'm telling y'all right now, the next time I'm on your show, I'm coming on here to shit on a song. <laughs> we're, we're, we're doing. Oh, we're, I would love that because no one wants to do that. We're doing that. Let's do that. We've yet I'm, to I'm have that, right? I mean, when Jesse's I'm, joined us for full first listens, we've gotten some of it, but that's re- no one has come on as a guest to specifically yeah. tell us why they hate a song on an album. Well, that's my lane. So anybody who hears this oh, right listen, now, don't do that's, it. That's I'm, a great. That's back. a great primer for the next defense. I'm with it. I'm looking forward um, to. It. So I here's the thing: is that um I I the reason why it's got to be an eight for me is because uh. Computer Love is one of my favorite songs of all time. Like there's there's a handful of songs. I don't know if y'all have this, if everybody has this. I can only speak from personal experience or whatever. There's like there's like a handful of songs that transcend uh rap or hip hop love or any of that for me. It's just I just love that song. Like like um there's like Lenny Williams. Cause I love you is another one of those songs. Like that's one of those songs that I just, I just love that song. Like there's uh, th- like, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a rap song or a hip hop song or whatever. Like there's just something about that song that speaks to, to you as a listener. I feel like computer love is like that for me. I hear it. And I don't know if it's because the, the time period that I kind of grew up in or whatever, which I'm not that old, but like, I'm just saying if it was from the sounds of computer love and shit like that, like between like the, like how they embraced it into like West coast funk and, and, and that kind of shit. And that kind of is what I grew up on as well. Or, um, I don't really know exactly what it is, but there's something about computer love, um, the beat that, that speaks to me as a, as a listener. And then when you listen to the lyrics, the song is so far ahead of its time. It's fucking crazy. It, it like, is crazy. <laughs> it, they are literally talking about falling in love with, with somebody you meet. And now, now they're not talking about it like this exactly, but it, what it translates to now is is falling in love with somebody that you meet over the internet. It's which, all computer love now. <laughs> yeah, to them it was just looking at a picture on the on the computer was like the most amazing fucking thing. Like they're like like Roger Troutman's having this whole fucking conversation in his head or whatever. And and it's just all, you know, digital. Like he wants digital love, you know, he wants computer love. That's not really a thing though. Like you can't like you couldn't do that then. 
Now you can do that. And that's what makes the song even fucking crazier to me or whatever. But but if anybody doesn't know with with what they use to make that song, that song was so fucking far ahead of its time that it, I just feel like I just got I just have like a different appreciation for it, I guess, as like a fan of music or whatever. And then um, and then me and my bitch is great. Like it doesn't hold up today um, because of because of, you know, the climate. Um, but not a lot of, like a lot of rap songs don't really hold up because of the climate. Like that happens. Well, don't and, um, hold up, I would say, to fresh ears, perhaps modern audiences. I think in some regard, you know, because I, I went back and I listened to both songs this week. Yep. Computer Love and the original Me and My Bitch. Yep. And this is where we can kind of talk about live music a little bit. Uh, I don't think, I mean, we've talked about it a little bit because like, for instance, I I think the live version of Heart of the City from Unplugged is better than the studio version from The Blueprint. Now, yeah, that's just my opinion. Um, now, I also think that Me and My Bitch is like a 7 plus 8 minus and Computer Love is like a 9 to me. Like, and right. quite frankly, like this this is just like sort of a layup in that sense so like a song i like and a song i love fuse together for a live performance it's cool i like it but why don't i love it like i love computer love and why don't i like it a lot like i like uh, me and my bitch i just prefer yeah. both of the songs on their own right i don't think that it's bad that they came together i don't think it doesn't work i think for what it's worth like the programming and everything, the way Big E like put the rhymes over it, it sounds great. And like as a live performer, even though there's really annoying crowd noise in this recording, it's not it like sounds yep. like the the crowd noise they pipe into WWE. <laughs> yeah, like in these empty arena shows. So like, right? You know, the you, I'd prefer like a nice soundboard recording, and then you filter in a little crowd noise for yep. ambiance but like this thing is so overrun with crowd noise i have to kind of cap it at a flat seven um right. live performances though are tricky i know a lot of people prefer the version of the food by common the live from version Chappelle from show. Chappelle's show that's yeah, on yeah. b i prefer the studio version that was only actually released on a white label uh vinyl and like i've ripped that vinyl like 15 16 years ago and never looked back i listened to the studio version of the food i do not right. listen to the live version i don't like it it's it's weird there's like a little bit of talib kwali gorilla monsoon rap scratched in there at the beginning it's like yep. not the beat you know it's like the beat is playing on a tv show so there's a different um basically when you have to master music for tv it's in a different, what is it, sample rate is okay. the word. Instead of like, it's at like 4,800 kilohertz or something instead of 4,100 or vice versa. I don't remember. That was a couple of years ago when I was actually doing some shit like that. But hmm. it's, 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 it just doesn't, doesn't knock to me at all. Like I prefer the studio version. Some people just prefer the version from Chappelle's show because it's the first version they heard. You know, right. so it's like a weird thing um with these live yeah i think versions. that's i think that's definitely a thing um that happens with people where they hear live versions and and then they don't like the regular version when it and finally people, actually comes out you know so. right or when they get around to hearing it and then vice versa like people that listen to the regular version they might hear the live version and they might be like oh i don't fuck with it at all but really they just it's just they're so attached to that original yes. version I mean, I mean i saw, i think that's a huge thing i saw a video on youtube like 10 years ago of Stevie Nicks from Fleetwood Mac doing a rehearsal. Yep. And she's doing her song Wild Heart. Yeah. But the song is not over the music of the actual song Wild Heart. It's over a song. I can't place it right now and I don't feel like looking it up, but it's right. the music, the instrumentation is from a Fleetwood Mac song from the album with Gypsy on it. Whichever okay. album has Gypsy on it. Mirage? I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But it's the album with Gypsy on it. So, like, 
they there's instrumentation from a Fleetwood Mac song over this Stevie Nicks solo song during this rehearsal. That's what the band is playing. Right, right, right. So when I finally, I mean, this clip is like amazing to me. Like, right. just the feeling of it is incredible. Um, right. So when I finally heard Wild Heart by Stevie Nicks, I was very upset because it didn't have this, like, it didn't have the music underneath it right. that I had become accustomed to. So mm -hmm. my preferred version of Wild Heart is this, like, really low quality yep. uh, rehearsal footage clip. It's not good quality, but there's just something mesmerizing about it. So I get it. Like, some people prefer live versions of you studio know how songs and vice versa. I don't have a hard and fast rule about it. It's about how the music hits me. In terms of you know how uh, I'm sorry, real quick, Lyle. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not trying to cut you off. But this from I'm, I want to explain to people like how deep I feel. I feel this runs like there's a um, there's a version of uh, of Mac Miller's Once a Day where he's just sitting at a at a at a keyboard um, like a piano and he's and it's like a cell phone clip and um and that clip was the only thing that you know mac miller fans had seen or heard of the song for you know uh the year or whatever after his death and then when they put out circles <clears throat> they have once a day on there and i don't mind the the instrumentation that they put up, put behind it so much but at one point there's a sample that they use that's like a it's like a like a chi like a wind chime like waterfall type sample where like they used it it was used like once on swimming mm -hmm. and then they used it again f like during this song on circles and when I heard it I was like that's not fucking supposed to be there like I got really fucking offended that they put it there and like it was one of those things where I'm like that ruins it like that like it, it's like it took the studio like it, it's like it, it's almost like they took the version that I knew which was the stripped down cell phone version then they made it a studio production a little bit and they added some stuff to it which which sounded okay and then all of a sudden I just hear that one that one thing that just sets me off where I'm like nope not the same. And it's like now I, I don't really listen to, to once a day, the studio version on circles. I listen to the the audio that I have of like the, the cell phone clip. Right. You know, so. You know, that's I, it. I, uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, you know, I bring this guy up sometimes on this show. Hmm. <laughs> uh, we were just talking about this. Wolves. There's a live performance of a song by Hamilton called Let's Roll. You know, oh, yeah, the Sayers and, uh, Club. I was there that night, right? And it was never released. We have it because we have it because we managed to to have it. But uh, mm -hmm. it's like the live version versus the studio version. It just it's one of the, it's one of them ones. You know, it's like there's there's a certain element to the live version. There's a certain soul to it. There's a certain uh, what's that? What's that word that they uh, the, the, the Americans started using? I don't even know if the French is je ne sais quoi. Mm, yes. <laughs> you know, there's there's uh, you know, I didn't expect I didn't expect to hear I didn't expect to be here today and hear that. <laughs> um, the uh, real quick again, uh, not, you know, the Mac Miller thing. Uh, there's a, just to just to kind of um, there's a live CD Mac Miller. Um, and there's two songs on that that I feel like are better than their original versions. And I think that's Best Day Ever and uh, and Watching Movies. I feel like the the live versions, and it's weird because Watching Movies, like, that's really um, – it doesn't sound better. Like, there's nothing about it on the CD, like on the, like on the audio version or whatever, like the – the live from space version that sounds better. It's just the fuck, like the vibe of it is better to me. Like, I, I don't like, well, I don't know why, but like of Mac Miller, there's that yeah. song on the album. I didn't care for it all objects in the yeah, rear yeah, view yeah. or mirror or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Objects in the mirror. Yeah. And then he did a performance with like, I think it's like the internet or like one of the, like one yep. of the like odd future type guys. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, it's the, it's the yeah, it's the internet, the, the group. Yeah, yeah the he band. did a live mm -hmm. version of it, and I'm just like, wow, this is a beautiful record. Like I'm, yep. You know, I didn't care for the studio version at all, though. Like zero. Uh, I like both. One more weird example, but yeah. have you ever heard uh, 
uh, about me or about me. It's by a problem. West coast rapper. No, I'm familiar with problem a little bit, but not really. Not, I don't think I've heard the song. There was a remix with Wiz Khalifa on it. Okay. And it just sounds like your average, like mid 2010s, West coast, like league of stars, DJ mustard type song. Right. It's like a, a banger basically. The Wiz Khalifa did uh, Bonnaroo, I think. It's one of these yep. festivals. I was watching like one of those YouTube live streams one year, and he came out to this song, but he had the live band do it. And live bands are tricky, you know. Not everybody's the roots. Let's put it that way. Yeah, that's like that's exactly how I feel. You know, when it comes to like Jay Z Unplugged, that's a great. You know, we reviewed it. It's a great yep. live album. And that's part and parcel due to the fact that the Roots are, you know, a great band, yep. especially at that point in time. Um, a lot of these well, bands... Well, Jay has, Jay has the Roots and then he has his other live band, right? Well, Jay doesn't have the Roots anymore. He kind of started right, that's with what I'm the saying. Roots and then he got his own band together and he's been touring with the same band. And again, like some rappers who do tour with a live band, um, I'm thinking of like Common, for example... Yep. Uh, Most Def when he was touring with like Robert Glasper. That's like more jazz though, or like hypnotic brass ensemble. Like that's cool. But a lot of times rappers will perform with just like a band. Like they're not the Roots or Robert Glasper or anyone right. of note or anyone who has any real connection to hip hop. Like Adrian Young. We're talking yeah. like just session players, essentially. Right. And, you know. It's not always great. It doesn't always translate. Like, ideally, you know, I thought Common did have a great setup because he had DJ Dummy, who's like a real, like, turntablist type of DJ. And then he had a live band, you know? So it was like you kind of get the best of both worlds there. Uh, same with Jay. I mean, Jay had, like, whether it was, like, you know, there's someone DJing um, on Jay's shows still to this day with the band. Like, you got to kind of have the beat and the band unless the band right. is really, really good and they can recreate everything because sometimes it ends up sounding too much like elevator music. Now, this was back in the day, really, other than like Stetsasonic and The Roots, pre-live band with the rappers, you know, kind of standing in front of them. So this is just a DJ. The beat's booming. My only issue with the mix here is how the crowd is mixed in. Um you know, Biggie was like really projecting his voice. That comes across. I love it. I love yep. how he performs. Yep. You know, Cause a lot of times, like when I would see a lot of rappers, like when I saw little Wayne at the peak of his popularity in like 2008 or maybe 2007, I, I can't remember now, but in Delaware, um, or in Albany, rather. Not in Albany, at the Armory. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gee, you familiar with the Armory? Yeah, very. What did you see there? Lil Wayne. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. So the sound in there was <clears throat> just the, the, the dirt worse. But he was rapping yep. over MP3s, you know? Like, early on, until he got better at live performances, when 50 Cent went out on the Get Rich Tour and the Massacre Tour, he was rapping over backing tracks. It wasn't until right. the Curtis era where he started performing with just him and a hype man and a DJ and no backing tracks. You know, you go see like French Montana, Future. I mean, Young Thug, when I saw him in 2016, I mean, everyone's rapping with MP3s playing behind them. Like it's karaoke. Yep. So to hear Biggie, no backing track, really project his voice. I mean, that's, it's like almost a lost art at this point in time i love uh i love that about this uh performance but this isn't my favorite live biggie performance that i've heard my favorite live biggie performance is that um is the uh when like when i heard it and when i saw it it was always labeled as the msg freestyle okay 
but but I don't think it was performed at MSG. Like I think it was because like it's on that um, that new Biggie documentary that's on Netflix, which I would highly recommend to people. Um, I got it they, on, they on had, my little short list of things I'm going to be checking out soon. It was re- it was real good. Like I I I'm I'm critical of that shit just because I've seen and kind of heard you know a lot about Biggie that unless they're going to bring out something really you know brand new. Well, they're saying <clears> excuse you know, me. There's a lot of new information presented in there, this thing, and everything. Yeah, that I've seen is. from it like. It's this might be the definitive Biggie documentary. Definitely, this is the, and this also. Um, it's funny because this is not notorious at all. You know what I mean? Like this is like this is the story that you know that they that I think they should have they should have tried to tell a little bit more in notorious and and they 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 showed they showed pieces of it, but not really what I feel like they should have showed. But um, what I love is that um, that MSG freestyle. The um, it's the nine nines, ten Mac tens. Oh, see what's, what's funny is I always had that as the Palladium freestyle. Yeah, I, I always had that. I thought that was the MSG was because I, I know it was on Mr. C. Freestyle. I got seven Mac Elevens, about eight thirty eights, nine thirty eights, nine nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit yeah. Never ends. That's that's my favorite. That's like one of my favorite Biggie uh, freestyle or verses of all time. Like that's that's incredible to me. Like when I heard that. you know, it was done. That's that's when I knew that Biggie was one of my favorite. Now that of all to time. me as a live performance, and it's yep. only ever been a live performance. There's right, been a right, ton right. of exactly. blends with yep. that yep. verse on yep. it, but it was yep. never recorded officially by Biggie. So to nope. me, that I say eight plus, possibly nine yeah. minus. Like that's one of my yep. favorite Biggie performances. Yep. Yeah, I got it because I know that was on. I'm pretty sure it was on the Mr. C Best of Big mixtape, and that was like a that's like a classic mixtape um, for people that aren't familiar with it. And I don't know if it's I don't know what it's labeled as on there either. But that's where I'm saying like that might be Yojo where I where I got the label from. Dozens from of mixtapes. It was on dozens. <laughs> no, I'm of talking about original. No, no, no. I'm talking about originally. originally. I'm talking no, about I'm the saying, first place that that thing was, ever surfaced. From that point was, on. It was tape. on mixtapes every year yeah, until like yeah, 2003, yeah. 2004. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to look up the the best of big um like the the best of big um mixtape that that C put out is um is the one. That's the definitive uh Biggie Smalls uh Notorious BIG mixtape. Um anything else is cool, but that's not the one. Like it's just not. Um I just oh, want to I'm say I've I've really <laughs> as far as this song itself, uh yeah. me and my bitch, I'm I'm yep. saving most of my commentary for when we do this studio version, but um I think the real key with these live versions. Oh is yeah, whatever. it is it is live at there okay, hold on a second. Sorry to cut you off, Mel. I gotta I gotta throw this out there because there's two there's um on on the G side, there's two sides, the L side and the G side. On the G side, it starts off Biggie Smalls, Juicy Skit, and then it goes into the Garden Freestyle, which is Big Daddy Kane, Big Scoop, uh, Tupac, Biggie Smalls, and Shaheem. I'm pretty sure that's that's the one, right? And then after that, it says Funkmaster Flex and Biggie Smalls live at the Palladium. Yeah, the Palladium Freestyle is what I've always known that to be. That's weird, like because that's because according to this, because I know that Pox on that too, because he comes in right after after Biggie, and he's like, yeah, Biggie Smalls, Biggie Smalls, like like he hypes him up and shit like that, and so, um, and I know Shaheem's on there too because he kills that freestyle, like he, I, so, I don't, I don't know what live at the, I don't know what they have, like why this is like this then, that might be a whole other deep dive for you guys, um. I'm I'm more so fixated on you said there's a L side and a G side. Damn right there is. What happened to A and B? We how we get to them letters? I don't know, but mixtape mixtape DJs would do that. But shit here's sometimes. the thing, Mel. Yeah, A and B. We're talking about Mister C. Yeah. Uh-huh. Exactly. Oh, okay. <laughs> nice. I don't know and if that's Mister C. LG. Always getting those promos from D E F. Oh, this is FJ? real quick. The, the yep. track listing for this mixtape is is fucking amazing. Um, uh, L side, uh, the you know all Biggie, freestyle live at Mr. C's crib. One more chance R and B mix, uh, real love remix, Buddy X remix, a bunch of redacted, uh, Dolly my baby remix, jam session, the what for my redacted remix, the original the what right? Yep, yep. Uh, let's get it on. 
I'm just playing. Uh, Cunt Renaissance. R.A. Uh, the Rugged the Man. Yeah, with R.A. Yep. the Rugged Man. Yep, Crustified did, did. Did I hear that title correctly? You did. Yeah, Cunt Renaissance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the B side. Um, All Men All Men Are Dogs remix. Who's the man? And then it goes to the G side. And that's a Juicy Skit, The Garden Freestyle, Live at the Palladium, Who Shot You, Can't You See, um, with Total, uh, you know, you know, that's right. Um, Real Redacted, uh, All Verses, um, Player's Anthem, One More Chance, Hip Hop Mix, uh, Think Big, The Points, uh, with Coolio, Redman, Ill Out Scratch, like, what? Uh, Flavor in Your Ear Remix, Warning, Big Papa Skit, and Machine Gun Funk. That's a that's a classic. Like that's if if you guys are gonna do mixtape reviews, ten out of ten. We do, but we don't do mixtape reviews that are a bunch of tracks that are available in more like Ready to Die and Life After Death are gonna be bigger priorities. So when we are right. here ultimately gonna end up reviewing ninety percent of those songs on other albums. Yep. Uh, well that's well that's where a lot of them other than that other than those albums like the that's, what that's why and... we're not doing like the above the rim soundtrack because like seventy percent of that is available elsewhere on other albums we're gonna be covering. Well the what warning Big Papa Skit and Machine Gun Funk are um are the only oh and then there's one more chance hip hop uh hip hop mix and that's way too much overlap. That's it. Yeah, there's like yeah, so there's like five songs I think. But that's a that's a grail. That's that's part of that, in my opinion. There's that's no, like but hold on. There's top five. It's missing. Staples. It's missing one thing though. What's that? The freestyle, the cream freestyle with the locks. Yeah, it is um, that because I think that came. I I think that came afterwards. How? But I could be wrong. I don't know. I I don't know. But that's that's the oh no yeah because well. I would have to I would have to listen to it again and 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 tell you. You know that freestyle it, is classic. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, like, I don't know. I gotta, I like, I gotta listen to it with new ears and try to figure out when they recorded. Oh, I wasn't aware they like, gave you it, new ears. I thought you've been operating with the same ears this whole time. <clears throat> no, ears develop over time, bro. That's a gem. You'll hear new things in music that, like, if you listen to something now and then you listen, you know, you listen to ten years ago or whatever, you'll hear you'll hear new things in it. Yeah, but same ears. You hear new, re- mm, I, I ah, two, new ears. Two, two peas, same pod. If, if new ears, I'm telling you, you get you you get new ears. Like eventually, your ears. It's the same thing. Like I just went through the speaker thing. Like you know that. Like I just got these speakers no, you, or whatever. You were making you, music on computer speakers, and I told you to upgrade to monitors. That's not getting new ears. That's getting new speakers. new ears. No, your ears hear things differently. You 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 upgrade your ears. At that point, uh, they just become new. This is gross, but this reminds me of when I was a very young kid and, and like my lip was peeling and like I started picking at it and my uncle was like, what are you doing? And I was like peeling my lip and he's like, why? And I was like, it's like getting a new lip. <laughs> he just looked at me like I was crazy. And I didn't see an issue until I got older. And I'm like, yeah, uh, that was kind of crazy. Gee, you know, me, me and your uncle, I feel like me and your uncle would get along. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we would get along just well. Shout out um, to Uncle Gavin. No, so. I think I think that you wouldn't get along with him because Mel's the one talking about new body parts. You you get along with Mel. His oh, uncle that new body. His analogy wasn't his analogy wasn't good. Just because nah, just Mel's because Uncle I, Gavin would look at you and, and and you know what he would say? What's up? He he would say like you guys are the ones obsessed with new body parts. Me and Mules are over here collecting figs <laughs> and not really concerned with growing new body parts. <coughs> he is an adult collector. So maybe, maybe he's an it adult would collector. be him and yeah, my uncle. Wow. A tag team match. Mel and GM versus uncle Gavin and Mools. Yeah, I but, just told you I fuck with them. I, I would turn on you. Oh no. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, stable. I mean, <laughs> Mools, uncle Gavin and GM. It's the new, we don't have a name yet. Oh, you know what? We're all adult collectors. We're the adult you're, you're, collectors. True. The adult yeah, the collectors, collectors, the collector circle. That's what we are. Yeah. We're um, we're like a we're like a real regal four horsemen type of deal. Yeah, we're right. good. Well, there are four people in the four horsemen. G. We'll we'll acquire somebody. I mean, why don't we just all? Tr- why don't we turn on the whole Fed and well, we th- just have th- to throw in my uncle Jamie? He's also an adult. Wait, player. you don't want to be in the? You don't want to be in the? In the I told you that's why I didn't want it. That's why I didn't want to include him. I could what hear it in his voice. You got a little Wayne Funko Pop. You got the Kane Decade of Domination. 
I ain't no collector. I'm selling that. I bought that because you said it was. It was. I ain't. I ain't. I ain't a flipper like that. But you know, I am a wrestling fan. I Aren't saw, you collected? Don't you collect baseball cards and basketball, basketball cards? Basketball cards. But I haven't been able to get a uh, card in like over a year, bro. These people, they lost their minds. It's Gary V running around telling them stuff. They're they're, they're camping out. I just it's. I just I don't even sell. I collect. I like basketball. Let's cards. talk about it, G. Is Gary no, Vee yeah, becoming a problem? Is he fucking the game up for the real hustlers out here? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Boy. Um, so I think I think Gary V is is good motivation for people that need motivation. Like if they if they're looking for that or whatever. Like there's some people out there that love like the Tony Robbins shit or whatever. Like they love like that that um who's that other motherfucker? Uh with the hair, the curly hair and all that. Listen, there's motivation and then there's um, there's cocaine. There's theories. motivation okay. and then there's Motorola. You know what I mean? Yeah. Here's here's <laughs> what I'll say is that um, a while ago, I'd say, I don't know, it's probably – like three, four years ago, um, I, I had a I had a collection of uh, of baseball cards that I was looking to sell because I didn't really I didn't really I don't really need them anymore. Like I didn't collect them like that. Like I didn't, you know, I was like, yeah, let me see how much these are worth or whatever. And um, I took them around, and I took them like two or three different places. And every place they were like, "No, nah, we're not really buying cards. We're not really buying cards." They didn't ask me what I had. They didn't say, "Let me check it out." Blah blah. blah. They just said, "No, nah, we're really we're not really buying anything." Now, um, there's a there's a real market for these things. Like people are people are funding. You know, if you get a card that's worth five thousand, ten thousand dollars, you get it graded. That could change your fucking life. Like that's that's life changing in a pack. And so I'm not saying it's it's helpful for the collectors, um, for the real like genuine like I you know I love these cards and I've always collected these cards like like Mel. But I'm just saying like there's value in it now and there wasn't any value in it before. And when there's value in it, you're going to get new cards. You're going to get new opportunities. You're going to get new, like eventually they're going to catch up. Like, especially, you know, they've been, they've been dealing with the, with the coronavirus shit, with the, with production of these cards um, and, and, and their factories and stuff like that. There's going to be a catch up to this where eventually there's going to become an oversaturation. And then you're going to be able to get all the cards you want. I can't and you'll wait until the bubble burst. Yeah, I'm telling it's you, it's going to happen. Again. But like, and, and that's gr- and that's great. And like, it'll probably be good for another ten years, or you know, whatever it is, twenty years, or if these digital cards take off, and you know, maybe people will, will leave behind the physical cards. I know that people don't feel that way in the in the collecting space, but maybe that happens. Um, but I'm just saying, like, I'm not mad. I don't look at it as like I'm not mad at, at Gary V because I feel like there needs to be people that are that are his um that are his popularity or like his uh you know whatever to to get people interested into these things so that you can keep them around and so that you can pump out new ones and so you can because it was a dying space like they're like nobody wanted basketball cards i mean you know shout out to Mel, he, he wanted basketball cards but nobody wanted basketball cards nobody wanted baseball cards and nobody wanted any of those i can attest um, to this because there was a point in time where i was seeing boxes of this shit and hanger packs everywhere yeah and and now they laugh at you if you ask them at the store or i mean i walked into the store it's crazy because i was talking to mel about this or i was talking to lyle about this before and um and you know he would tell me like oh you know um or like when he was in the store he would say oh i hear this guy looking for you know these packs or i hear this guy looking for the you know these figures or whatever and i'm like man collectors are fucking crazy like i don't i'm not really i don't really go store to store like that i don't really get into it um like that um, I went into a store to, to see if like they had some cards or whatever. And I walked past the counter and there was a guy up there and he's like, yeah, I, I wanted the two packs, the Pokemon packs that are back there in the, uh, in the, in the, the, the display. And she's like, oh, okay. Um, are, is it, wh- what were they? He's like, oh, they're just two Pokemon packs. They're the only packs there. I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ. Like, like he's up there as I'm walking in, I'm hearing this and I'm just like, gee, like, like I wasn't even in the store for, That's what I'm, saying. Seconds I'm not like, I mean, I, I do my hunts and stuff like that. I'm in different Facebook groups for stuff like that. And, you know, doing my, you know, talk to me, pa. but right. You know, there's, there, I just noticed some people, like sometimes there's people and I'm, I'm like, these people look fucking shady as shit. They're just like standing around. They're like robots waiting to be activated when like, a new palette of stuff comes out. 
Right. You know, they're just kind of like waiting to like, they're just like zombies, like just like lingering. They just linger. Like it's not just like me being in a bunch of different targets or Walmarts. No, 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 no. I hear you. It's literally, this is like a thing. It's like a plague. They're there. Yeah. Yeah, It's like a plague of Mm -hmm. flippers that are like just idly, like just kind of like lingering around and lurking around the store. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? Like shit has just gotten so weird. That and you know, if and they people sense are buying that you're there that to do the it. same thing, they are. They start giving you that that you know oh peripheral glare. Yeah, you know, yeah, they, but you yeah. know what, but bro, this is not just cards, and it's and it's really, it's not just Gary V. You know, you got situations like no, nah, it's Gary um, V. It's Gary V. And no, I got a no, message no, for saying, Gary V. Right not, now, I bitch, get not, out the fucking business. <laughs> get out the business. It's not just. I didn't say it's not Gary V. I said it is not just Gary V. Because I can tell you. David was saying something to me the other day. I can't find a fucking graphics card to save my life. Graphics yeah, cards yeah, all of yeah. a sudden. Because mm-hmm. whether it's online gaming um, and computer, you know, people build, building their own rigs. People working from home and Working shit. from home. Mm-hmm. Um, doing streaming, like heavy duty streaming on like Twitch. Or yep. this NFT and this crypto mining and stuff like that. These graphics cards have all of a sudden become worth they're like bars of gold to the yeah. point where people are buying computers taking yeah. out the graphics card and selling the graphics card for more than what the fucking computer was worth so yep it's everything i mean even with you know i sell wrestling figures horror figures and blu-rays Mainly. Everything is for sale talk to me i get everything you want anything you need talk to me i get it right here right now and the secondary market for, you know, like figures that are now sold out, Blu-rays, limited edition shit that's sold out is crazy. I would yeah. have probably died of poverty if it wasn't for the boom in wrestling figures and physical media over the pandemic. Yeah. Yep. Wow. So... I mean, there's two sides. I'm glad you know, we it, never entered the impoverished mules era. That would have hurt. Well, my heart. The, the other thing is about collecting like cards or whatever. Is like when I was when I was growing up and I was collecting, you know, baseball cards, basketball cards, whatever, football cards. Like you didn't really it, like there weren't special cards really. Like it was just a it was just cards. Like you just, I, I mean, I there were a bunch of commons really. Like they were just it was it was like you might get like something kind of cool every once in a while. Like Upper Deck used to do something where like they would have a fold go, like a like a, a gold foil. I never remember like guaranteed card. hits though. It used to be like a Willy no. Wonka situation where if you got something crazy, it was like one in every five thousand packs had it. I got a I got a George Brett upper deck card that had like a gold like a gold border around it and and it was just the regular card but it had a gold border around it and I was like oh this is fucking incredible yo George Brett like that it it probably sells for like five bucks now or something like that like it's not it's not anything special but I looked at it as like oh my god this card's amazing blah 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 that card's nothing now compared to what they're doing with these fucking cards like these the design on these cards alone. Um, if you're not getting a card where it's just like a, a player, like a, a, a player picture or whatever, if you're getting some kind of like a design, any kind of design that's on the card, I, I can see why people would want that. I could see why why it has a value to it. So um, that's why I'm kind of looking to get back into it a little bit here and there is just because. I would I would be okay with collecting those cards. Like I would like those cards are something that I would actually want to own. I wouldn't really want to own the cards that they that they had when I was growing up or whatever and the design of them and stuff like that. But some of the new cards where you can get like pieces of jersey or pieces of the ring mat, like in the WWE cards or you know pieces of a basketball or whatever. Yeah, that's, that's pretty fucking cool. Like I'm I, like I, I I'm all right with that. So if there's value to that and people and and it's hard for me to get that. Okay, like I like I'm from the sneaker era, like where it was really fucking hard to get sneakers. Sometimes you know, it's still it really goes fucking two hard. ways like, because, like, as a just what it is. as a collector, it's a pain in the ass. Like, if you miss yeah, out on something um, <clears throat> and you wanted to get something, I mean, I've seen yep. wrestling figures that were, let's say, last week available for twenty, thirty dollars, are yep. now selling for at minimum one hundred and fifty, two hundred on eBay. So as a yeah. collector, it sucks because yep. like I'm not about to spend that much money on a figure. 
That being said, though, as a seller, I'm doing better than I ever have. So it kind of works both ways. It's like, like anything, if you've made a significant investment into this thing at, up until this point, that investment has paid off. If you join the party late, you know, and it's all a game of chance, really. You know, Mel has this cane figure that I told him to pick up because it's going to be worth a lot of money in a couple months. Right. He just stumbled on it, though. I can't. I've never seen that figure on the pegs. So, right. You know, it's a game, really. Like, like anything. You know, there's there is work that goes into even obtaining the shit that's flippable. So, you know, it's not. I mean. It's not ideal, I guess, to linger around a store for hours. I wouldn't do it. It's not how I operate. But, right. I mean, perhaps the dividends are worth it for these people to get something, spend the $60 to get it expedited by PSA so they don't have to wait a year, and they could be up thousands of dollars. So it makes a lot of sense. Um, and at the end of the day, what's the option? Like, what, what other what other option does he have? If he gets the cane figure and then he brings it home and there's somebody looking for that cane figure, if he puts it up on eBay for 15 bucks or whatever, like if, if it's one of those deals where, oh, try not to make, like, don't make more than what you what you spent on it, blah, blah, blah. Um, if, you, if you put it up for 15 bucks, somebody's going to buy that shit within three seconds I, I and they're going to turn I mean, around and do the same for fucking me, thing. I have a policy and this is why I think I do very well. And if anyone's listening, you could feel free to adopt this policy yourself. Look mm-hmm. at the item, like go on eBay and look what it's going for. Sort by low to high to see what the cheapest available option is in the same condition that yours is in right. and mark it down 10 to 15% lower than what that person is selling it for. That right. way you will sell it within 48 hours and you will have the best price. To, like to me, it's a matter of when something is out of circulation I don't consider myself to be a scalper anymore. It's now on the secondary market. It's not available. Scalping is something that's like, to me, while it's still in circulation, while stores are still receiving stock, for example. Right. And that's why I'm in Facebook groups where it's all cost plus shipping because people like to help each other out, believe it or not. You know, um, on the secondhand secondary market, though, on something like eBay or Macari, um, things are worth what people are willing to pay for them. If people are willing to pay $200 for an action figure of Stone Cold Steve Austin, I'm not the one to like, I'm not the one to go into that place and say, this was a $20 figure. Are you guys insane? Right. What I'm here to do is to say, $200 for an Austin figure? Okay. Uh, I'll do I'll do you one better. Here's the Austin figure for 175. Right. That way I guarantee that I'm going to sell it because it's the cheapest one available. And I'm not really scalping. I'm I'm kind of just pricing competitively with what the market is. Right. You know, if there's only so many things in existence and they didn't get it while it was freely available for $20, then yeah, I'll charge under, under market, but obviously above retail because that's the hustle. Yep. It's a hustle folks. When I say talk to me, I, I, I mean, you could talk to me and there's stuff six, $7, whatever, you know, it's all about the market. I, I don't set the prices. The world sets the prices. What is yep. What's this podcast about again? <laughs> oh yeah, 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 right. Be my bitch. Well, Biggie would right. appreciate this. We're what I'm doing is I'm taking the rap rankings universe uh, as a uh, special sneak ple- sneak peek of that talk to me life. I mean, we know the third member Jesse. He just sold some DVDs on eBay. You know, as he calls himself sometimes, Black Mules. You know, so <laughs> I wish I, mean, I wish that was a lie. But he does. Hmm. You know, um, I, I don't consider myself to be special in any regard. Uh, and I'm happy to help anybody who legitimately is interested in learning uh, what to do on eBay with whatever you're selling. I'm not saying necessarily start investing in wrestling action figures and horror films on Blu-ray if that's not what interests you. But... That's what interests me. I mean, you guys listening to the show, you like rap. I know 
a lot of rap comes out on limited edition vinyl. And then when it's gone, it goes up five, six, seven times what it was worth on Discogs and stuff. There's hustles out there and just apply the principle of look at what the market is selling something for, undercut the market, be the best available option and work with, work within the confines of the market. Just look at what shit's selling for. I'm not a genius. I won't claim to be a motivational speaker like that Gary V, that charlatan. If it's one thing we know about Biggie, it was all about the free market. Well, uh, I, I ain't saying I'm a, a capitalist or a socialist. But, yeah, you, uh, you only got a decade of domination, Mattel Elite, Kane figure on your shelf right now. insistence, the guy I who keeps telling everybody to talk to him. I talked to you. You told me to do it. Listen, are you going to make some money off of it or are you going to keep it? I'm making some money. <laughs> Man, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shut the fuck up. Listen, I, I just you know, I, I, yeah. I always when I'm in the when I'm in the stores and I see figures, I you know I I, I like to send wolves a, a photo or something, you know. Yeah. If there's anything. Well, I mean, you know, I don't. I, you know, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a drive for me. I'm more of a Target guy. We got a lot of Targets in my area, and not a whole lot of WalMarts. So. I love uh, when I have. We, we got it all here in Peoria, Illinois, but we ain't got no basketball cards. That's, that's why sure. I've been trying so, to move there for years. One of the greatest no, places no, in America. Please. Uh, I'm going to revitalize it. Get the fuck out of here, you motherfucker! Um, Hashtag I, gentrify Peoria. I, I just I just got one thing to say about this me and my bitch <laughs> because I haven't you know I'm waiting until we do the actual studio version but the main difference between mm-hmm. studio and live or the, a good live version is going to preserve the elements of the studio version that you love and add something new for you to enjoy otherwise yep. you're just you're listening to a song that probably sounds better in studio quality you know if they're not yeah. adding anything different to the live version but there's like banter at the end um and honestly, this banter reminded me of, uh, you know, it's it like Birdman. He's on stage and like they're at, at like some show and he's like, you know, they're like, he's like, you know, what, what does he say? He's like, come on stage or something. And he's like, you know what I'm talking about? Moves. He's like, we fuck with niggas too. Because <laughs> you know? like they're like shouting out the women. Anyway, it comes off the way he says it. it it's a little, you know, it's like, uh, you, it, what do you mean by that? You know, like that, that's, you know, that's how it comes off. But on this, on this record here, they're, they're talking about, uh, so, you know, using that, that 1995 hip hop language, he's like, all right, so I'm going to take the niggas and you take the bitches. And then I guess it sounds like the DJ or something. He's like, whoa, 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 hold on. I ain't taking no bitches, nigga. And I'm like, whoa, uh, progressive, uh, speech about to happen in 1995. Uh- I'm pretty sure it's Diddy, and I and I think that's oh, that adds man. even. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I was gonna say. That adds even no, more to the legacy. Said. But <laughs> but yeah, I'm pretty sure. Like if you listen, to I that, thought he was gonna I mean, say, I can... "No, I'm taking the niggas." But he 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 went a different a different uh, progressive way with it. He was like, "It's the young ladies, nigga. The fuck you talking about?" And then the women yeah. start sharing. But I thought he was gonna say, "No, I want the niggas." And no, but then he says that at the end. He does. <laughs> yeah, he still clarifies that he's still he's still with it. Oh, so, Lord. just saying. Well, listen, um, um, I just got to say, you know, Diddy, if, if whenever you're ready, whenever you're ready. Pat, what? <laughs> whenever he's ready. I think he's saying everybody's waiting to hear it, not that he's ready to uh, do it. Right. Yeah, no, come yeah. on, bro. Come on. I'm just saying, Diddy, uh, if you are... Uh, you part of the LGBT community. Then just, you know, whenever you're ready, because we love that, you know, here on Rap Rankings. And uh, mm-hmm. I know the world's a scary place. You can't trust everybody, but you're safe here on Rap Rankings. If that's how you get down, that's for sure. So, well, um, he, yeah, I, what I took away. Diddy if, if, if he gets run out of rap, for sure. He can what, always- I, what I took away from that back and forth was like, uh, I, I it, it only solidifies my uh, my opinion, my controversial opinion, even more that I'm not going to get into, or uh, I'm not going to, because then that's really where the hot takes start flying. Um, but I'm just saying, it seems like the relationship wasn't the best at all times. Like it seems, it seems like they might have had some issues. Um, 
And it seems like something very petty. Like the way that they go back and forth at the end, like and, and like it's not a not a big deal. Like I get it. People could be like, "Oh, you're looking too far into this shit. You're being dramatic." Blah blah blah. But like, it just sounds real. Like I've been on stage before with rappers. Like I've I've done the rap thing. Like I've you know what I mean. Like I know what it's like when people start doing like the kind of like one up type thing and like the the back and forth where like you're you're clarifying yourself in a situation you don't really need to clarify yourself in and shit like that. And like that's where it starts to go to with those two at the end of that song where it's a lot of like. Yeah, but all right. Yeah, but yeah, me too. But yeah, but yeah, but you know what I mean. It's like all right, all right, okay, okay, guys, guys, we're we're trying to have a show. So um, I don't know. Just felt just felt a little bit weird, a little bit awkward. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, me and my bitch. Yeah, I mean, I I really got nothing else to say. <laughs> Biggie, Biggie, uh, or Diddy heard that that Biggie wrote the song, and the title was in reference to Diddy, and that's why he was so upset. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> he was like, me and my bitch. Thank you. That's what I was working for this whole time. <laughs> this whole time I was waiting to drop one. Just fucking one. <laughs> nice. All right, fellas. All right, Jay, uh, well, you got anything to plug before you get out of here? No, nah, man. I'm uh, I'm laying low right now. I mean, I'm trying to I'm putting some things together or whatever, but we got, um, you know, everybody's just trying to get through the to the other side of this thing. So, um that's pretty much where I'm at right now. It's good to see that y'all are healthy and, and uh, doing well and all that shit. And, um, you know, same to the shout out to the listeners that, uh, that fuck with me. This like is said, the best face you. turn I've seen in some time. Well, thank Baby you. Baby face right, like GM is a star. Okay. Oh, well, next time we're getting into it. Cause I'm coming on here for at least a three. <laughs> is there any, uh, oh, I can't say that on the air. So I'll, I'll speak to you later oh. about it. But, uh, all right. That works. Yeah. Um, folks, uh, all right, brothers. Well, yeah, everybody holler at me. Um at not you raps uh on um on Twitter and uh that's about it right now, man. I I, I think by the t- by the time I come on next time I'll probably have something a little bit more more to plug. Another heel um, turn. Nah, not a heel turn, but just a little bit more to plug. Just uh just something that I'll probably be doing. Or for people to check out. So I'm usually active, but all right. just not well, lately. Uh, as I'm sure it's getting pretty late for all the rab heads out there. Let's move on to track 26 and bid GM farewell. <laughs> oh my God, track 26. <laughs> they really, they really duped everybody with the track listing on the original because they didn't put that the um the, the, the interviews were interviews. Yeah, so, so like, they made it oh, sound shit. like songs. Method Man, Headbanger, Boogie, Doctor Dre, Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And then you go and you listen to it, and you're like, whoa, 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 what is this? Um, so that, and, you know, they were kind of shady for that. The other thing I wanted to point well, out the album um, for anybody. allegedly didn't chart, so. Real quick, I know that I'm not supposed to talk about the movie. Um, we're only here to talk about the songs. Well, we but talked about what the I, movie already. Well, I got to throw this out there real quick. For anybody that watches the movie, just in the very beginning, just that first, like, five minutes or whatever, they talk to, to, to Russell and um, they talk to Russell about about visiting rappers in jail, and he talks about how he doesn't visit rappers in jail. Yes, we discussed. And it. yeah, th- th- man, I hope nobody visits him in jail. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, That's all I'm saying. I hope everybody hits him with that same that same clip. You want to talk about keep the same energy? That's the energy. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, we don't we don't visit no rappers in jail. They they misled and they 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 could have been around what we were around, but they didn't. Man, fuck you! <laughs> get the fuck out! Get the fuck out of Belize! Get back here! Let's see what's going on. Get the fuck out of here! All right, fellas, um, it was good. Uh, it was good chopping it up with you, and um, I'll let you get on to your show. All right, all right. Thanks for coming on, right, bro. Yeah, of course. Peace. Hey, it's Mel from Rap Rankings. To hear the full episode this clip comes from and all of the other episodes, check the link in the description, stop by raprankings.com, or search Rap Rankings on your favorite podcast platform. And please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting to help us grow the channel and continue our journey as hip-hop's first and premier extreme podcast.